Hello, friends. Welcome to Chickenlandia and welcome to Bok Talk, your 100% friendly backyard chickens show. I'm your host, Dahlia, also known as the president of Chickenlandia. I'm a backyard chicken educator that has found peace and joy in the chicken yard, and it is my absolute mission to help you find that too. Okay, welcome back, guys. Um, today is episode 14. I can't believe I've done 14 episodes in this season. It's season four, episode 14. Today, we're going to talk about what to do if your chicken gets wounded and you are panicking and you don't know what steps to take. We're going to break it all down so that if that time ever comes... You can handle it with confidence, okay? I think this is might be one of the hardest experiences, you know, for us chicken keepers. Like, you walk out into the chicken yard or you go into your coop and there is a chicken that has been wounded. Maybe there's blood present. And it's just like, it's just one of those moments where it's like, oh, you know, what do I do? So, of course, there are very serious injuries that, are beyond home care. Okay. We're not going to be talking about those today because they're beyond home care. Um, but you would be surprised how, you know, how well a chicken can survive something. Okay. <laughs> With the right, uh, TLC. Okay. Uh, and sometimes, you know, they can go on and just live a long, happy and healthy life. So we're going to talk about it and we're going to take the fear out of it and we're going to make it easy. Okay. I do have a listener question today. I'm going to answer that. And then I'm going to open up the questions for chat for, I'm going to open up the chat. Let me do that again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Deep breath. Okay. I do have a listener question today. I'm going to answer that. And then I'm going to open up the chat here live on YouTube so that the viewers that are joining me right now can ask me questions live. If you want to submit a question to Bok Talk, all you have to do is go to welcometochickenlandia.com, go to the contact sections, and click ask a chicken question. And why, while you are there, you really are going to want to join the world's most amazing chicken mailing list. It is called Chickenlandia Nation. I will send you a discount for my online course. It's called Chickenlandia's Backyard Chickens 101, a chicken, a chicken course for everyone, because it is, it's for everyone. Um, this is my super fun, interactive course, and it's a great way to get direct access to me. I know many of you send me messages. And if you do hear back from me, it is many weeks later. And I, I don't like that, but I have to do it because I have to prioritize my time. And so, you know, if you do take the course, I tend to prioritize those questions and I get to them much quicker. So a lot of people like that aspect of the course. Um, so I'm super proud of it and I hope to see you there. All right. I'm going to say hello to some people in the chat. Hello, Jasmine. How are you? Who's your pioneer? I hope you're doing well. Thank you for being here. Joan, thank you for being here. Whitney is here. Peace of my heart. Homestead is here. Urban Chicken Mama and the Rooted Heart Garden. Thank you for being here. Bean and Briar. Song of the Black Unicorn. Thank you for being here. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being here. So, so today I'm going to jump, I'm actually just going to jump right into the listener question. And today's question comes from Brandy. So Brandy says, hi, we had a chicken attack this morning. We have a supposed to be predator proof pen and two dogs somehow got in. Two chickens escaped and the other four have small injuries. Three have feathers pulled out and a couple of small bloody spots. And one had what looks like the crop super swollen. I'm not sure what that is about. Um, one also has teeth marks in the back. We are first timers and they are a year old. I'm not really sure if we need to do anything. Can you please offer some advice? So I, I get many of these messages. 
Um, and it's heartbreaking every time because I can just, you know, I can like read the panic in people's words when they send me these messages. And I have totally been there and I know how hard it is. So the first thing I want to say, Brandy, is I just want to say to you and to everyone listening, because so many people have had this experience of feeling like they're coop and run, we're predator proof. And then unfortunately they have this predator attack. And I think this is just one of those really hard lessons that happens to almost all of us who have been in this chicken game for any period of time. Um, and I hate to say that, but it is true. Like predator proofing can be tricky. Um, and there seems to be always room for improvement because predators are smart and a lot of them are little and they can get into small spaces that we just don't anticipate. Like a weasel can get into a tiny space, can get through a tiny hole, you know, and dogs can dig and these might just not be things that we anticipated. Okay. So, you know, sometimes we just don't realize those things until something happens and I just don't want you to feel bad about this. Of course, I know that it's awful and I know that, you know, we feel terrible about the chicken losses in these situations, but it, it just, honestly, it happens to the best of us. Um, it happened to me. Okay. A, a while back it happened to me. And then after that, I really like focused on the behavior, I started to, to think, okay, I need to anticipate what the behavior of these predators are. Is that, is, is that English? <laughs> Sometimes I don't know. Uh, so I am going to leave a video, um, about predator proofing. I, of course I talk about it in my book, but I, I have a video that really details like predator behavior and how we can reinforce our coop with, their their behavior in mind and I will leave that link uh to that video in the show notes for all of you so that you can check it out okay because I think it's just one of those things if you can get ahead of it before it happens it's so it's so valuable because a lot of people especially if they live in the city or they live in the suburbs they're like oh my chickens are fine they've been fine for five years but there are so many animals that out there that want to eat your chickens and they are in the city and they are in the suburbs, even when you don't see them. They are there. And a predator uh, attack never happens until it does. And of course, you know, Brandy's talking about domestic dogs. And that is like a huge issue. Okay. So, and I love, love, love dogs. Don't get me wrong. But domestic dogs are one of your chicken's worst nightmares. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to leave that video in the show notes. So hopefully that can help you out. So Brandy, I did send you an email about this, um, this past week. Um, and I know that what happened happened several weeks ago. So I assume that you did all you could do in your emergency situation. But right now I want to go over some very simple first aid steps that, you know, if you ever come up against a situation again in the future, hopefully you don't, but if you do, you will have this information. And I, I'm going to talk about not only like basic wound care, but also what to do if your chicken is in shock, because that it can even be more dangerous than, it, than an injury. Okay. So, but first, before I do that, I need to make two announcements because my friends, I got to pay those chicken bills. I still, I still have to pay those chicken bills. I've got some baby chicks in the chicken yard right now and they're eating me out of house and home. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I am going to uh, make two announcements. And the first one is, as always, I'm letting you know that this podcast was brought to you by the folks at My Favorite Chicken. My Favorite Chicken is my favorite online shop to get my feed. I get my non-GMO, organic, socially responsible scratch and peck feed there. Um, I get my supplies. I can get fun chicken stuff. Uh, they have a really good first aid kit. Okay, I have one. It's a great first aid kit. They have that. This is all at my favorite chicken. I'm going to leave a link for you in the show notes, okay? 
And this podcast was also brought to you by Small Pet Select. Small Pet Select is a small local company to me, but they have an online store that I know you will love. Right now I'm using three of their products. Um, I basically am always using these. Uh, I use their, um, they have these little pouches called Pet Greens. It's where you can grow sprouts. They're super easy. They're fun. Kids love to do it. Um, I use their organic pine shavings and their flaked oyster shell, all great products. And they have other products for furry little animals too. So if you have bunnies or chinchillas or hamsters or whatever, <laughs> you're going to love this website. I will leave that link for you in the show notes. All right. And there is a coupon code for that one. Okay. So, um, I don't know that the Chickenlandia presidential advisor is here. She's usually the moderator. Um, and she's just not, uh, sometimes she just doesn't make it. So she is not here right now. So I want to let you guys know that I answer questions at the end after I'm done, um, you know, discussing the topic for today, I will open up the chat for questions. I, I usually don't get to all of them, but I do try. All right. So if you have a question, if you can please just hold off until I open up the chat. Okay. All right. So. Here are the steps you need to take if you have a chicken with a wound. And please keep in mind that we're not talking about severed legs or like, you know, wings gone, uh, a horrible gash. You know, I, I'm not saying that there haven't been situations where chickens survive these and people are able to treat them at home, like really severe injuries. I have seen that. And it's like a miracle sometimes what chickens can survive. But I'm not a licensed veterinarian, so um, any kind of wound, very serious wound, is beyond my area of expertise, okay? So what I'm gonna talk about right now is some basic first aid steps for a wound that you can care for at home, okay? So step one, and if you, you know, if you have a pen and, and a paper, you can write these down, they're very simple. Step one is is kind of, obvious. You need to wash your hands. Okay. Uh, you want to prevent introducing further infection, uh, into your chickens or into you. Okay. So make sure you wash your hands before and after you're treating your chicken. Okay. Step two is very important. You need to stop the bleeding. You stop the bleeding before you do anything else. That is the first step. Okay. So, um, keep in mind that if a wound happens on the comb or the waddles or the toenails, they will bleed like crazy. Okay. Don't panic. All right. Just get it to stop. And the way that you do that is you can use a product called quits quick stop. Okay. And the, they have that. I think they have it at my favorite chicken. It's, it's on Amazon. You can probably get it at the farm store. You can probably get it at pet smart. Okay. Um, it's called quick stop K W I K stop. Uh, you can use that. You can use cornstarch or you can use baking flour. Okay. And what you do is you sprinkle the powder over the area where the wound is and you kind of just press it into the cut and allow a little bit of time for it to clot and for it to dry before you clean the wound. You just want that bleeding to stop. And, and certainly if it's like profusely bleeding, you don't want to be washing the wound at that point. Your, your first course of action is to stop that bleeding. Okay. So the next thing that I want you to do is clean the wound and you will, you can, you want to clean the wound. You want to clean the surrounding area to, you know, prevent infection and to help the healing. Okay. If you don't do anything else, just clean the wound. Okay. That's the, that is a very important, stop the bleeding, clean the wound. Okay. This is the best thing that you can do. Okay. Um, and to clean it, just run it under some cool water or you can take a, a soft washcloth or a, a, you know, a cotton cloth and just gently dab it and clean it with a gentle soap, like a Castile baby soap. Um, and, or, you know, it, it, this is not a completely natural product and some people don't like to use it, but in a pinch, you can use just classic Dawn soap to clean the wound. Okay. And make sure that you, when you're cleaning it, you're not getting your chicken 
completely drenched. Okay. Because that can really stress out your chicken. This is not time for a chicken bath. Um, <laughs> that will stress them out. You don't want that. Okay. Um, so step four, apply a topical treatment. So there are many, many good wound treatments that are safe to use on chickens. Some of them made specifically for chickens. Here are my top recommendations, but there's lots of, lots of good stuff out there. Um, of course, Veterison is like, and I don't even know, like I've never actually heard anyone say that word. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I think I am, <laughs> but it's V-E-T-E-R-Y-C-I-N, Veterison. Um, this is a very popular product and people really love it. And it, it, you know, it's gentle, but it also really helps to prevent infection. So you will spray it on the wound generously and repeat it daily throughout the healing. Another thing that you can use that is a spray is colloidal silver. Um, and I always have colloidal silver around. It's something that I use and it's something that my family uses that can also just spray it on the wound. It's not going to, it's not going to hurt them. Just use it, spray it on the wound and repeat it daily. Okay. Another thing you can use if you want to go with something that is very natural, but is more of kind of like an ointment, um, is raw honey. Okay. And it, the reason I say that is because raw honey is a great antibacterial, uh, substance. Okay. <laughs> it helps to, it helps to heal uh, wounds. Okay. And you're just going to take, you know, just like you would put ointment on a wound, you take it and spread it across the wound. Of course, if you're using raw honey and really if your chicken is wounded, they need to be separated from the flock. Okay. But you don't want to tempt your chickens to peck at this wound or, you know, other chickens to attack a chicken and peck at a wound because you're putting raw honey on them and they think it's delicious. So you, you do need to make sure that your chickens are separated from the flock. And we're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. Um, another liquid one that you can use is hydrogen peroxide. Um, a lot of people just have this read, readily available, put it on a cotton ball and, uh, you know, swab it on their, on their wound. Um, Neosporin is a great one that is very popular that a lot of people use and most people have around the house. Uh, you don't want to use the one with painkiller in it. And, you know, honestly, like people talk about it all the time, like don't use the one with painkiller. I've literally never seen the Neosporin with painkiller. It's like this urban legend, <laughs> but I think it does exist. <laughs> so if you see it or if you have it, don't use it on your chicken because it is thought to not be good for them. Okay. Um, but it's a, it's an antibiotic, so it should help to prevent infection. Okay. So slather it on the wound, you know, rub it on very gently. Um, and then of course there's blue coat. Blue coat is very popular. A lot of people use it on chickens. You need to know it's, it's made out of something that will 100% stain your clothes. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's good. Like it, it helps with infection. It helps, um, you know, it just has like antibacterial and antifungal properties. Um, so, uh, and antibiotic properties. So, uh, it, it, and, and it also, like, if you have your chicken, like, let's say you have more than one wounded chicken. And so you've got them together you've separated from them the them from the flock but you've got them together it is good to disguise a wound because you don't want like a red wound you don't want other chickens to see that because they will peck at it okay so that is one way in which blue coat could be superior there is some some thought that it's painful um for the chickens I have not observed that, but that is one consideration. If you're concerned about pain, you might want to use something else. Okay. Okay. Step five, repeat. All right. <laughs> repeat steps. Let's see. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Every day you're going to want to check on that wound. You're going to want to uh, make sure that it's clean. You're going to want to reapply uh, a, a, uh, you know, an antibacterial product onto it to help the wound to, to 
heal faster. Okay. So let's say that you've done all these things and you know, you've got the wound stable. There's no bleeding. The wound is clean, but your chicken is staring off into space. Okay. They look stunned. They're not eating or drinking. They're just kind of standing there. Um, what that means is that your chicken is in shock. Okay. This is not a great situation. Um, so, you know, I mean, I have actually seen chickens that were not wounded very, very badly. Like they didn't have any, any wounds that you could see. It didn't seem like they had any kind of internal wounds, but they went through such a traumatic experience and they weren't able to come out of the shock from that experience that they literally died from that, even though they did not have significant wounds. So it is an emergency situation if you have a chicken that is in shock. Okay. Um, but there are things that you can do. Okay. So first off, you know, I don't know if you've ever had like a bird fly into a window at your house and you go outside, the bird is on the ground and you're like, oh my gosh. And you might take the bird, you know, what they say is, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a wildlife rescue person, but this is what I've always heard that you can do is just like get a little box, put the bird in the box and kind of set the bird aside in a, in hopefully a safe area to give them time to come out of that shock. Okay. Chickens really do need time to decompress from such a traumatic experience. So you want to make sure that they are in a quiet area so that they can focus on, on healing. They cannot be like re-traumatized. They cannot be, they, they don't need to be like scared that something else is going to happen. Um, and, and we will, we'll talk more about that later too. Um, but you just need to give your chickens space at this time because they need that time to come out of that state of shock. Okay. One thing that you can do, if you are someone that is open to using homeopathics, now I talk about homeopathics a lot on my channel. I've been using them for over 20 years. Um, I even did, I was like a guest on, on a podcast recently um, where we talked about homeopathics and chicken. So I'm really into that modality. I know some people aren't, but if you are into it, what you might want to do is immediately when you notice a chicken is in shock, you administer the homeopathic aconite in 30 C potency. Okay. And they come in like these little, like if you go to the health food store, um, they come in this little blue vials and they're the most popular ones that usually every health food store has is by a company called Boyron. Okay. And you'll see there's like different potencies. Um, I want you to get the 30 C potency. Okay. And you can take two of those little pellets, put it in a little bit of water, put the water in a needleless, you know, uh, draw the water up into a needleless syringe and just put a couple drops on the side of that chicken's mouth. And they might just be sitting there like completely out of it, but you just put a couple drops and usually it, a little bit, all you need is a tiny bit just to go into their mouth. Okay. And you can even put, uh, two pellets in like a shallow dish of water and just uh, let the chickens sit in that shallow dish and they can soak it up. Like if you really can't get it in, into their mouths, they can soak it up that way. But if you want to learn more about, um, dosing homeopathics for chickens, I do have a blog post about that. I am going to leave that in the show notes for you because there is a, a little bit of a, a learning curve to knowing how to dose them. So I want you to check that out so you can know how to do it properly. Now, one thing I want to mention is that I am talking about the homeopathic aconite. I am not talking about the actual plant. Okay. And the reason I feel like I need to mention this is that I've had pushback, um, not only from like listeners and stuff and which I, I completely understand. Um, but I've had pushback also from other educators telling me that, you know, hey, you're telling people to give chickens a poisonous plant, okay? But what is not understood is that homeopathy is not herbal medicine, okay? So it's not like an herbal tincture of aconite. 
homeopathy is energy medicine, okay? It is not the actual plant that we're giving to the chicken. It's the vibrational energy of the plant that is in the homeopathic pellets or a liquid, depending on how, how you uh, get your um, homeopathics, okay? And I know that sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo to some of you. Okay, I get it. And that is totally fine. There's, there's so many other things that we can do, and we're going to talk about that. But for those that are open to homeopathics, aconite is a great remedy to have on hand. And actually the saying that goes along with aconite is where there's fright aconite. Okay. So if there's any big shock, whether it's a predator attack, a, some other kind of sudden injury, a sudden, an illness that comes on very suddenly, or even something like heat exha exhaustion or hypothermia, like something that's like just very shocking and scary. Okay. I would immediately dose with aconite in any of those situations. That would be the first thing that I did. Okay. And another homeopathic that is great when a chicken is hurt or wounded is Arnica in 30C potency. Okay. And you can read more about this in the blog post that I'm going to leave for you in the show notes. Okay. Um, so do that. If you're into homeopathics, do that. And then leave your chicken alone with access to food and water in a quiet area and give them time to come out of that shocked state. Okay. If you have left them overnight and the next day they're still in shock, they're still not eating and drinking, that is starting to become a dangerous situation. Okay. So at that point, I would consider hand feeding them with a needleless syringe, uh, very carefully hand feeding them because it's super easy to aspirate a chicken. Okay. A little bit of raw egg yolk, with some vitamin, electrolyte, and probiotic water. And you can get, you know, vitamins and electrolytes at your local farm store. You can get them online. You can make homemade electrolytes. I have a recipe for them in my book. Um, and I might make, I might make a video about that soon. I'm thinking about that. Um, or you can Google, you know, homemade chicken electrolytes and there's good recipes online from reputable sources. Okay. Um, but when you're giving it to them, you just want to put like a little drop, you know, just put drops on the side of their beak, let it go into their beak and they should kind of slurp it up. Okay. At that point, if it, they're just letting it fall out of their mouths, um, it is very possible that your chicken is beyond help at that point, but usually they will, that, that will kind of ignite that that reflex to drink when, when there's liquid in their mouth. And so they'll do that, but you never want to put it like right down their throat because it's so easy to get it into their lungs that way. Okay. <laughs> Many of you that have been following me for a while, you know that when I have a sick chicken, I use a protocol that I created called the rest method. Okay. And it's just very simple, supportive care for sick chickens. That is also what I want you to do with injured chickens, okay? Because it's just such a good um, supportive protocol. So if your chicken is dealing with an injury, use the rest method. The R is remove your chicken from, from the flock. The E is give them electrolytes, vitamins, and probiotics. The S is give them something super tasty that's going to tempt them and kind of like get them out of the of that shocked feeling, um, scrambled eggs. Okay. <laughs> the chickens love scrambled eggs. All right. And the T is temperature control. If they have a wound or an injury, you don't want them to be having to work on staying warm or staying cold, cool. Okay. So put them in an area that is temperature controlled. Okay. And I'm going to leave a longer, a link to a longer video about the rest method, but this is it in a nutshell, but I'll leave that in the show notes for you. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Brandy for your question. I hope some of this information is helpful to you. I'm so sorry that I didn't get to your message sooner. Um, I hope your chickens are doing okay. And I just hope that this is, uh, helpful to you in the future. And I'm sorry that you had to deal with that. Okay. All right, so before I open up the chat for questions, I just want to remind you all about something super important. It is my book. It's available. <laughs> it is available. There, there we go. 
<laughs> it is available for order right now. I'm going to leave a link in the description for you. Um, it's a, it's on Amazon. It's on uh, Barnes and Nobles. Um, it's at your local bookstore probably. It is called Let's All Keep Chickens, The Down-to-Earth Guide to Natural Practices for Healthier Birds in a Happier World. I know some of you have already got it. Thank you so much. But if you don't, you should check out that link. Um, so now I'm going to open up the chat for questions. Please, if you will write your questions in all caps so that I can see them, uh, that makes it a lot easier for me. I'm going to get some more. That's awesome, Carolyn. I've never heard of that. I mean, I know what elderberry juice is. So Carolyn McBride says, a week ago, most of my 13 chicky babies came down with foul pox. I found only two YouTube uh, videos, uh, remedies for it. I used both together. I put elderberry juice in their water and they are almost well. That's great to hear. Okay. So if you have a question, please put it in all caps. Hi, Dahlia. Uh, this is from Peppa Joy. Would you have any suggestions on treating lice bites? My roux had a bad reaction. That is interesting. Um, after a lice infestation swept through my flock. Thank you. You know, um, I would take, I would bring them inside. Um, I would probably, you know, for something like that, I might give him a nice, uh, like a warm bath to kind of hopefully, uh, bring down some of that inflammation. Um, and then probably treat them like a, like wounds. Like if he's got this allergic reaction going on, uh, if there's any like open wound, I would definitely treat that. But I might just keep him inside and give them a chance to heal. And obviously, like, um, you know, I, obviously you want to treat whatever's going on to make sure that he doesn't get reinfected. But I would remove him from the flock if he's had that that much of a severe reaction to to the lice. And I guess one question would be. Is it is it a reaction to the lice bites or is it a reaction to the treatment of the lice? Because it's possible, even with a natural treatment, that, you know, a chicken could have a reaction to that. So um, with that in mind, I would just, just do the rest method with him. Um, and if you can put some some kind of soothing ointment on them, that may help too. And I'm sorry about that. Of course, your best course of action would be to chat with a, a licensed veterinarian about that because that that is something that's like, um, you know, it could be some kind of um, serious reaction to something. So uh, I know that not everybody can talk to a veterinarian, but if you can, it would be good to do that. So CJ says, I think my chickens have gape worms. Help. Um, so in my experience, you know, gape worm exists in certain areas of the country. It is not as common as a lot of other um, parasites that we see. That doesn't mean that that's not what is going on. Um, if it is possible, and I know, like, like again, I again, I have to say, I know this is not possible for everybody, but for something like gape worm, I would really try to get a proper diagnosis on that, um, and then go from there with it with the appropriate treatment for it. I do think that Vet RX treats gape worm, but do not quote me on that. I am not positive. Okay. But for something like gape worm, you might want to get something that you, you know, something that, 
I hate to say it, but I might go with something that is synthetic for that, you know, um, something through a, a licensed veterinarian. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry. I, to be very honest with you, I don't have personal experience with gate worm. Um, I think that there's probably some herbals that will work on it. I will leave a link to, um, my, my favorite herbal company is called Molly's Herbals. And one really good thing about this company is that she's, she's very good at like answering questions. So I'm not certain that the formulas that she offers would be effective against gape worms, but I would consult with her about it and see, and you know, I, I, I she's always been really good about answering my questions about, um, you know, different parasite problems. So, um, hopefully she will be able to answer your questions, but I will leave that link in the show notes for you. And I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. I don't, um, I, I just, I don't live in an area where there, where gate, gate worm is common. Okay. So I hope that it resolves for you quickly. So Steph asks for advice for a pendulous crop. So what you want to do is try to get the crop to kind of shrink back up. Because usually what happens is, is that it got impacted at some point. And then it was just, you know, through that impaction, it kind of got stretched out. And now it is, it is so stressed out that it has become pendulous, Okay. So, and what Steph basically means is that the crop is kind of hanging lower than it should. So what I would do for this is actually remove that chick, do the rest method. Okay. Remove that chicken from your flock, but instead of giving them uh, scrambled eggs, I would just have them on a liquid diet, like with just water with vitamins and electrolytes and probiotics for about a day. Okay. And see if that, if that crop can kind of shrink back up. Okay. And that's what you want. The next day you can give her something that is, that does have, uh, that's nutritionally dense, but that is not going to, um, like sit in her crop. So something like some plain whole milk yogurt, um, you can get, you can give your chickens egg yolk. Okay. Or just like raw egg that is, that is, um, you know, mixed up, let's like beet. So, and they can eat that. Okay. And it's not going to like fill their crop in a way that could, um, endanger it to be become an impacted again. You really want to kind of contract it back up if possible. So I would try that first. Um, and hopefully that can resolve the issue. I know that they have like Literally, like if you go online, you can look for like basically like chicken bras, <laughs> but, but it's not, it's not, it's like for the crop, but it's to help kind of like hold it up. Um, you know, I've seen them before. I would go, I would do a search for that and see if there's something that you can create to kind of hold that crop up and hopefully kind of um, get the body to to bring it back up again. But if she's, you know, I've also seen situations where it just will not go back. And if she is pecking and scratching, if she has a good quality of life, I would keep an eye on her, make sure that crop is emptying, you know, make sure it's empty every morning and just try and keep her quality of life as high as possible. Because I have seen situations where it just wouldn't resolve. Okay. And I, you know, at that point, my suggestion is always to just give them the best quality of life you can. And, you know, sometimes they do okay like that for a while. Okay. So I, I hope that that works. So guys, I'm sorry. I, ha I can only answer one more question uh, because I have to take my kid to soccer practice. So I'm, I'm having a hard time finding something. Oh, Janelle says, I don't have a question, but I just want to thank you for being you and sharing your passion and knowledge with us. Thank you so much. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to answer this question. Um, Urban Chicken Mama and the Rooted Heart Garden asks, it's so cold in the Pacific Northwest this year. Um, I'd like to get my new babies out of my house. They are two months old now and almost fully feathered. It is 50 degrees at night. Uh, 50 degree nights are coming soon. Is that warm enough? Yes, above 50 degrees is warm enough. Okay, and what you can do if you're if you're concerned, what you can do is like keep them outside all day and then maybe put them in like in the garage at night where it's like it's colder, but it's not quite as cold as it is outside and have that kind of be a stepping stone for them. Okay, and it should only take a few days because above 50 degrees, if you know, if you have a little flock of chickens, if they have a good coop. Um, they should be absolutely fine. They're fully feathered. They should be absolutely fine outside. Okay. But if you're concerned about it, you can always have them outside all day long and bring them in at night. Okay. And you can do that until it gets over 60 degrees at night or how, however you feel comfortable, but you, it really, it should only take a few days for that transition. When it is dangerous is when it is like, you know, it's it's getting freezing overnight and some people are like oh they're fully feathered i'm gonna put them outside right now and they go from being under the heat to just going outside and even when they're fully feathered that can be very dangerous for baby chicks okay they're not really baby chicks but juvenile chickens so there should be kind of a, a stepping stone to get them outside um and make sure when they're inside that they're not in, they don't have supplemental heat because once they're fully feathered, they really do not need that if the temperature is above, you know, it, above 50 degrees. They really don't need that. But you can, tra you can transition, transition, <laughs> but you can transition them slowly. And, you know, that's what I do. I just feel more comfortable do that, doing that. There's plenty of people that will just put them right outside, but I will transition them. You, you can put them in a shed, you can put them in, you know, some place where it's just not as cold as it is out in the coop, okay, to, just to have that extra step. Guys, I'm sorry, I know there are many more questions, and I just have to go, I gotta take my kid to soccer, that's just like, I'm a soccer mom now, <laughs> I'm a chicken mom, and I'm a soccer mom, so I want to thank you so much for joining me today, thank you to uh, my co-producer, Kelsey Paulus, also known as the Chickenlandia Presidential Advisor, thank you to Talking to Crows for editing this episode, and to Double M Ranch for their wonderful podcast art. If you enjoyed this podcast, remember to rate and review it. And also, above all else, remember, you are always welcome in Chickenlandia. Bye.